I think so. so Alex, do we have an audience now? Like, have you, is, are we broadcasting? Yeah, we are live, yep. Okay, great. Um, so I'll call this meeting of the Capital Planning Committee meeting to order at 6.43 p.m. If anyone's watching, sorry for the late start. We had some technical difficulties, so technology is great, but it's not always perfect. Um, so the first couple of things we're going to do is review of the receive requests from the following departments, Highway Senior Center and Library. Um, it's going to go a little bit out of order just because the Senior Center had several requests, so we'll save that to the end. So I thought we could do the library first. Um, and looking at that request, it was $12,000. I just don't remember exactly what it was for. Let me just pull that up. Here we go. Oh, that's right. This was for um, several repairs to the building, bathroom repairs, ceiling repairs, things like that. And the uh, estimate is around $12,000. So, um, Colleen Curis, did you, for the $12,000, do you have an estimate or anything for that repair? <clears throat> or is it just, how I'm did you come for the $12,000? I'm going to defer, defer it to the other Colleen because she okay. had of everything we needed. Um, so I think I have the furnace on there too as an estimated um, new equipment we might need in the next yep. years, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they're all kind of just estimates because we don't know labor costs. We don't know. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. But mm -hmm. the main ones, I think I had down the furnace, the bathroom, including the toilet and the sink. Um, we just had a we just had an oil leak leak with the furnace. So the furnace is unfortunately in the attic. So every time a furnace repair, so there's two things about that. One, it makes it really hard to know what's going on with the furnace if it appears to be running fine. So it was running fine, um, and we had Peterson Oil come to clean it about a month ago and. Um, the first guy that came for Peterson was kind of freaked out and said, I don't know that, you know, the oil could be anywhere. It could be in the walls. It could blah, blah, blah. The, um, they sent someone two days later who seemed to be more of a master technician. And he said that it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as the first guy said, and that they were able to clean up a lot of it. He thought it was fine. They put in a new pump uh, for the furnace. So the cost was about, uh, I think it's all gonna be about 1,200, a little over a thousand um, between the, the pump cost and the labor costs. Um, so that's difficult that it's in the attic. And every time someone comes to look at it, they have to climb this long ladder, you know, remove the ceiling tile, go up in the attic. Um, I called Peterson's to try to talk to a salesperson to get an estimate for a furnace. And he said about 7,000. The old furnace, Colleen, do you know exactly when the, when the furnace was put in? Or I, I should say this furnace, do you know when it was put in? I think that furnace came when we redid the building, when the library moved in in 85. 85, that, that was about yeah. 85. Um, so that's the furnace. The bathroom, um, the toilet and the sink are both very old. The sink's starting to have, you know, rust spots and we've had to change out some of the hardware on it. Um, the bathroom has kind of a continue, the, um, the toilet has kind of a continue run problem. Um, so those are the two major expenses for the inside. The outside of the building, and Colleen, maybe you can help me with this. I know I try to get the Worcester inmate program um, to take care of cleaning up the outside and then painting it. They're volunteers. They haven't been able to paint it. Um, and it, not all of the building needs painting. The front of the building needs painting, mainly the front. Um, and they're willing to do it. They do a lot of schools and a lot of organizations as long as you give them lunch. Um, but because of weather conditions, we haven't been able to get that done. Now, Colleen, you've dealt more with the windows. It's my understanding that the trim, the windows have to be, um, the trim has to be scraped and updated and 
painted and right well our sills the window sills need to be replaced because they are so close to the ground um and with the mulch issue you know every year they put mulch in it never removed the old mulch mulch so it was like er eroding of the sills so we need to replace the sills but we want do want to replace the sills until we have the painters come in because they have to paint so as colleen said we're having an issue getting the inmates down and with corona they're not sending them down with corona going on too so okay Okay. So, um, so, but for the ask for all the things that you discussed, it's $12,000 you believe will cover everything? I, I, that's the estimate I came up with. Um, okay. And it, it does depend really on the labor costs, which I don't have. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of just the best estimate I could come up with. Does anyone have any questions? for Colleen or Colleen before we let them go? I mean, you're welcome to stay, but we just won't have any more questions for you. Yeah, yeah. Just, if I could, uh, one of the things you had in the list uh, in the submittal was also electronic outdoor sign. And just speaking, we're doing a sign for the town hall and mm -hmm. those are not inexpensive. Uh, so I don't know what you're, right. you're thinking right. here. That, um, yeah, so we had a meeting of the trustees, people threw out things. That was one of the items that came up. I would say that's, you know, that's not essential, right? The other things are essential. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, all things being considered, that's at the bottom of the barrel. I mean, the things that are really essential are the furnace, the bathroom. We have some segments of the ceiling that need to be replaced, the tiles, but that that's a minor cost. That's not a big cost. The two major costs are the furnace and the bathroom and um, the outside, the windows on the outside. Okay. And I think we thought just looking at the list, even excluding the outdoor sign that 12,000 might be a little light on uh, the real that's cost a, of that kind of work. So, real cost, yeah. You know, we're that's what a I... bunch of maintenance, you know, you know, we're bundling a bunch of, I won't call it maintenance, but items within the one sort of capital nut, and we might want to think of a slightly larger number there. Okay. Would be my thought. Mm -hmm. So knowing more would be, would make sense. I think before this committee finalizes on any kind of number or action. Right, right. If, if Colleen and, you know, can find out a little more details of the, the items plus, you know, installed, um, you know, because furnace is, you know, seven grand, it's probably, you know, maybe it's seven grand installed, I don't know, but uh, uh, that that's a pretty reasonable deal. You're probably talking a home size type of furnace there. Yeah. But, it, but given that where it's located, if you're trying to think of changing its location, then you're talking yeah, much more things that okay. may be uh, more complicated. So, right, a little more to follow. But I, I think, given the age of the furnace that you described, if it's a 1985, you know, its useful life is probably passed um, pretty well here. So, okay. Um, okay, I can try to get more. You know, just talk to. I I don't know, Colleen, if you know, like a contractor or somebody. I I mean, I can. Oh try to talk to people and see if I can get a better estimate. When would you need the information by just as soon as possible? Yeah, I mean, so we were gonna kind of set the schedule tonight. So um, I believe this is almost our last round of inputs. We have to get, I didn't put it on the agenda so we can't talk about the request that Peter put in for the town hall, but then that's really the last one. So at the, at the next meeting, we would probably do, you know, collect the information from Peter and then debate which ones we want to put forth or like vote on all of them and whichever ones get the majority of the votes are the ones that we would put forth on an article for the town to vote on. Okay. So um, we don't, next week for me is a, is a bit hectic and it's a short week. So I don't think we'll be meeting next week. So it'll probably be the week yeah. after. So okay. if you get us that a week from Monday. Okay. And I don't know if anyone at the town hall could maybe help you with an estimate. So are you, are you looking at like the, are you looking at the 25th for estimates? Yeah, that would be like the earliest I would need them. I could email both of you and let you know when our next meeting is and we would need it by that next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, 
But the earliest we would have our next meeting would be the 25th. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, Jen, I do have a couple questions. Sure, of course. Hey. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned the windows, I guess, are kind of close to the ground, Colleen. Yes. Um, and that the mulch that is put up against that is causing some of that damage to the to the window sills. Yes. Um, do you have gutters around the whole building? We do. Okay. Uh, so you're not getting any backsplash on that at all? No, no. So the, the, the cause of some of that damage to the sills is the, the mulch. Um, are you intending to remedy that somehow so but that it doesn't we, we, continue? We did, remove, we did remove a few layers and put down another layer down, but that's where, how we found it because of the because we do have um, ant traps also around the building and that's when they found it too, when they were uh, putting in the ant traps. Okay. So <clears throat> the, the, obviously if you go forward with this, you, you would need to have some sort of remedy looking at the, right. it, there's no sense putting another layer of mulch and have new window sills and have to do the same thing right. again. Right. So right. You, would, you would have a remedy for us on that as to how you would fix that, correct? Hopefully, yes. Okay. Second question I've got is, uh, I think I heard you say the furnace was 1985. Yes, I believe so. Uh, that's, that's extraordinary that that furnace <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> I, I can later than 1985. We can find out the exact date on that. Yeah, but, it, uh, that, that seemed extraordinary if that's still, yeah. still working. Um, the oil tank that accompanies uh, the storage of the fuel for that furnace, uh, would that also be when the building was redone uh, with an 18, 1985 vintage? And is it above or below ground? The oil tank is outside, um, right outside the window of um, kind of this back room, storage room of the library. So you go in that room, um, you need a long ladder to climb up into the attic where the actual furnace is and the oil tank is outside with a lock around it. Um, and it's, that's just the way it's set up, yeah. Do, so it is covered over with some sort of structure over it? No. Is, is it out to the elements? Yes, it is because we, uh, a few years ago, we had to replace it and we had an outdoor uh, thing put up. Yes, it's so the problem. oil tank, the oil tank was replaced a couple of years ago. Yeah, I'm going to say maybe five, six years ago. OK, and good enough. I, I was concerned if it was as no. old as the furnace. You no, it's not. No, another no. issue that may take place. So, no. OK, so the oil tank seems to be in good shape. The furnace is the issue. And you've got the oil tank now uh, covered. So that shouldn't uh, elongate its uh, its life. And that's a good thing. OK, that's my two questions. Thank you. OK. Anyone else have any questions? Sorry, just library? one last one for clarity. Yes. Uh, you also had listed outdoor shed. Is that on your list still? Um, that's, you want to answer that one, Colleen? <laughs> I would like to see that on, on the list. Because that's on the wish list, yeah. That's, that's a wish list kind of thing, but I'd like to see that because um, as Peter was saying, something about maybe moving the furnace, if we do move it down, move it out of the ceiling, which I would like to see, we would probably put it in the back room. And I remember one time we had talked about it and you need so much cl clearance around it, you know? So a lot of the things that are in the back room would have to be in a, in a shed or add addition onto the building itself. So. And so, so if the thing needs to be moved, then you would require a shed. Yes. Okay. I, and that and was I included think, in the twelve thousand as well, because I so I no, put everything. No, that's got to be way more than. More, yeah, way that's more what I was thinking. I think we're over twelve. Yeah. I agree, with you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I like Colleen said it, it was a wish list, but I mean, if they if you know if we go to the furnace people and they said you know we have more issues of getting upstairs and seeing what's going on, we recommend you putting it down. Then we're going to need the shed. Okay. So it was kind of like. Well, that would, I think, yeah. as Chris has said, I think that would increase the cost considerably right. based on- I mean, maybe maybe we could get a little bit of breakdown on, on some of these things, like, you know, the, the bathroom's about seven, you know, the outdoor shed, let's just say is six, you know, and you're at 25,000, but, you know, the real ass 
is twelve thousand for this year. You know, with a wish list kind of of some right. of these other items, including yeah. the outdoor signs, you know, and et cetera. Right. Yeah, and you can probably get hard estimates of a shed. You can get a hard estimate of the furnace as recommended, for instance, even just from Peterson Oil for the time being. And I can connect you with somebody we use for sort of odd jobs like repairs and painting of buildings and so forth. So that, that might at least get us a good idea what the real numbers are here that you're talking about. But you want us to try to estimate the labor costs too, right? Is that right? Well, well Peterson- The total cost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the total cost. So it would include the labor costs. Yeah, yes, so. you should. Um, yeah, I think the trustees, you guys have looked into the shed, right, Colleen? Yes, we did a few years yeah. ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Gail should have some estimates on that. Right. How many estimates do you require, Jen? I mean, we'd like to have an estimate of, of really everything. So if... No, I mean, in terms of the... Uh, if you were looking for Peterson, could you also get yeah, two other three. ones? So you'd have three as a total. Oh, do we have to have three? Oh. Um, How many so estimates so, do you require? So you need yeah, three. so Jeff and Steve if are saying yes, but, yeah, but I'm not sure. Over, if it's over 10,000, you need three. But so we don't know until, you know, I think for this committee to pick a number, it, it you're not really getting the estimate <laughs> to procure it at this stage of the game. You're really getting the estimate to be able to pick a number that, this committee can bring to town meeting, I think. And so I think Peterson, who knows the furnace, is probably your best bet to give you an installed estimate, including the preferred location of a furnace. And likewise, the guy we've used on odd jobs could probably give you an estimate of the various, you know, bathroom ceiling tiles, painting, and you know, windowsill replacement and such. Um, knowing that it, it it's work that wouldn't happen until July 1st at the earliest. And then your last thing is there's probably shed people like Sherry can connect you with somebody that we've been looking at for a shed that we've considered. So, um, you know, those three things, I think you can get good hard numbers to bring uh, back to us. Uh, so we can say, okay, it's now 22,000 that we're looking for round up to 25 or whatever, I don't know. Okay. So Peter, could you email us then, or email me the, the, yeah. um, the guy? Yeah. yeah. You betcha. But, but yeah, this is several different items though. Does the total cost of over 10,000 or, you know, a shed is six, a furnace is seven, you know, painting is say a thousand. Right. Would we need three estimates on each of the separate items or just yeah. for the total? No, for the procurement, it's, it's for an actual activity. It's three for the thing that costs over 10,000. So, but this is more of, we're looking to bundle a bunch of things that mm -hmm. probably standalone don't even fall under the capital rules of the town's bylaws, you know, so, but, yeah, but bundling I, does work, I think. Yeah, I put them all together because they were, it was general building repairs. Right. And so it was all, everything for the one building. So the one thing you could perhaps argue is a shed should perhaps be separate since it's, separate, since it's not part of the building, but that's the only thing that I would consider breaking out everything else I would put together as a general building repair. Okay. The shed and the sign, I would think. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. I, I have a question for Jerry. Um, BBT, I no. know they do, do they do build sheds and deliver? No, uh, they, <laughs> they did. Don't. COVID has changed the world, as okay. you can well imagine. Um, yes, we've done sheds. Uh, as you know, we did one up at the church, which is to the right of it, where we keep all the uh, extra seats and tables and right. things. Right. They can do that. We're not doing anything now. Doc has prohibited anything from okay. because of COVID. I'm sorry right. to say, I wish I could help you with that. Love to, but I just can't say I can do it. Okay, thank and you. you. And this, the sheds, do they have any temperature control at all? Or these are no temperature control, right? Is that right? Right. Like you can't heat, it's not heated or anything. It's no. just dead, right? So it's cold in the right. Winter. I think the biggest thing, if I remember correctly, on a, on the ventilation, and I don't know, maybe one of you guys, uh, Jeff, probably knows more than I do, or Chris. Um, there needs to be uh, ventilation. If you have proper ventilation, you have a furnace running, and that was something we had to make sure at the Legion, which which cost us a little extra money to make sure we had ventilation running out the side of the building. Uh, they had previously been in the building, so we had to revent them out the. 
law to have them in the building. So there are some stipulations that you would need to go through. To have a shed, you would need to have certain requirements, you probably check with the building inspector, how that needs to be vented. Okay. So it's, it's not just putting a shed, it's, it's a little more complication to that. And again, I think, you know, if you're taking something from a ceiling, I'm not, a, I'm not an HVAC guy, but if you take a thing from a ceiling and put it down, I imagine there's some considerable piping that has to be done to make that happen as well, as well as whatever's required for the shed. So you're probably going to have an expense there that's probably going to meet Peter over the 10 grand, but yeah. inclusive of the labor, which is right. probably going to be one of the biggest. Well, just for just for calling, generally sheds are, you know, not heated. You know, they're not. That's correct. Do you, you need electricity brought to it? If you do, that's a little more expensive because you're you're tapping into, you know, the power from the building and bringing it to the shed. Uh, Two twenty. Yeah. Then you got a building inspector. So there's that kind of stuff. So it really depends on what you're hoping to store in there. What the purpose and is how there. frequently you have to access it, and you know whether mold and cold and rain. You know, sheds are generally good at keeping the water out, but they're not. 100% perfect, depending on what you get, you know. So right, right. All to be considered. Okay. Okay, well, that all sounds reasonable. So we'll see what we can find out about the costs and try to finalize that for you. Yep, that sounds great. And like I said, I'll email you uh, both the next date at the um, library email address of the meeting. So we'll need it. The 25th will be the soonest that we need it. It'll probably be after that, but I'll just to give you a ballpark for tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, so Pam, just to let you know, because I saw you had trouble joining, all of us had trouble joining. Um, so uh, the, since the senior center had a few other asks, I was going to go to Highway, who just had one ask, and then senior center will be next. So you didn't miss anything for your asks this evening. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So Brian, I all I had for this year, uh, the highway department was a street sweeper for tw approximately $26,000. Is that correct? That, that's on the uh, list that we had uh, given you. Is that last year? Yes. I don't know. Time gets biased here. Um, <laughs> but uh, more so, you know, I, I, I know it's not an ask for a one year, but I know we talked about it last year. Um, the big need for the highway department, uh, if you were going to put some money aside, you know, would be to start saving for a building. Um, and I know that's not a one year, one year thing. And it, it's probably a, you know, five, six, seven, eight year, um, hopefully not that long. Um, <laughs> but, you know, th that is probably the biggest need um, in front of us, as I can see at the moment, um, okay. by, you know, us changing the way we're doing things, um, not having any place to, to, uh, to work, um, to store uh, equipment, to store just our, our regular um, barricade signage um, tools. Um, we keep stuff all over the place. And I still don't believe that, that the sitting board members would even have a clue of where we have our stuff. Uh, with that being said, um, in the short term, uh, we have as of right now, we have three trailers that are tucked up down behind the elementary school, which is the top of SD Street. Uh, two of them are still on wheels. They were given to the town uh, through the uh, last highway surveyor um, many, many years ago. Uh, and there's another one. Uh, the wheels got cut off and it's on the ground. Um, we don't have electricity up there. Um, in the past year, we've had over half a dozen uh, times when we've had vandalism from kids. Um, it's to the point now where they're um, deteriorating from underneath themselves. There's holes in the floor, the back doors, 
are <clears throat> starting to uh, rot off. Yeah, you just heard the library talking about their windows. Well, I, you know, the, these trailers are probably um, back from the 80s themselves. Uh, we have a set of concrete steps with uh, six steps going up to one of them to get in the side of it. The other one, we have to open the one with the steps to get our step ladder to go over to go up the step ladder to undo a padlock uh, that has a wooden door built within the frame of where the roll up door in the back of the trailer would have been because that um, got broken into and then rotted off and uh, we you know built a frame with a hinge door on it to get by. Um, we need a place. Uh, our day to day tools are down at the salt shed in a 10 by 10 the old God shack for the, the, the dump for the landfill when it was down there before it was a salt shed. Um, just until now, the, you know, we, we kind of solved the problem. We used to, every time it would rain or snow, we'd get, you know, four to five inches of water in that little building. So we'd open the door, we'd step in because it's below grade, and it'd be water and then there's no heat. So what happens with water in the winter time, we'd step in into a sheet of ice and you, you, you go for a ride. There's a lot of, a lot of um, accidents waiting to happen. I, I really, you know, the town needs to, in my opinion, needs to start as the, we finally have a good working capital committee. And thank you for that. We, we need to start saving for um, like they used to do in the days for uh, fire trucks and buildings and uh, all the above. You know, they put X amount of dollars, they'd start earmarking, you know, $25,000 a year and mm -hmm. then, you know, do one big push at the end to figure out how to, how to get something to happen. Uh, maybe it's putting some money aside and getting some help. I'm by all means not the one to do it, but someone to find uh to write a grant and get the remaining of the balance um yeah you can get these buildings really cheap and you could put them up on the the uh the um the lane person but you know you get to municipalities you got to do everything's prevailing wage you can't uh you can't get around it that's why the cost of the building of that such is uh where it's at um and remind me brian the cost of the building was it eight hundred thousand or more uh, i believe uh, the number i gave you last year was 900 the paper i have in front of me uh which is an old paper um right now was 850 i'm i'm 99.9 .9 that last year the number i gave you was 900,000. Okay. And I'm still confident that that's a good working number. Uh, I've had some conversations with um, Mr. Cavello, uh, who's uh, well-versed on this kind of stuff, uh, dealing with it in his line of uh, profession. And mm -hmm. uh, he's done some of these buildings and uh, we've talked about it. He, he's willing to uh, come aboard and, you know, help me, you know, push this forward as he had stated and he had told me that my number was uh, right on cue for one that he had just finished. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty confident that that's where we we stand with this. Um, <clears throat> that being said, you, you were just talking about sheds um, with the library. Um, short term, uh, I really feel we need to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, you have a plan for this and you say it's, you know, five, 10 years down the road, we got to do something other than what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, whether it be a very large shed, um, kind of like the uh, police fire department have behind the old town hall. Um, maybe it's two of those, um, has a roll up door. It's, you know, it could be put where, you know, I, I believe there's enough room and land where we have that salt shed. I've I've looked at it. Um, I'm not an engineer. Obviously, it would have to be all stamped and done that way. But I believe there's enough land there to set set a building or set these sheds uh, if, if done properly. So 
So, uh, you know, first off, I, you uh, know, that's where I think it belongs. I think it would fit there. Um, but there's, you know, a lot to be done with no money. You can't do anything. Yeah, I, I'd like to say, if I if I could, that, um, you know, Jeff Penn and I work at the DPW in Bellingham, and we you do end up having a lot of tools and a lot of equipment, and having a good building is, is very important because it keeps everything organized and makes your work a lot easier. And, you know, we're, not, we're just going to keep getting more and more stuff as time goes on, so it would be a good idea to at least definitely think about planning ahead on that one. But it's important. <laughs> it's really yeah. important. No, I know. Um, there was talk about leasing or renting a building in town as a short-term solution. I don't know what the status is of that or if that's possible. I don't know if anyone has any information on that. And that's I believe that building was taken, but I yeah, think, uh, it's a mar it's gonna be a marijuana dispensary now. That's yeah. lifted luxury, that's where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Are there any other oh, buildings yeah. in town, Brian, that you know of? Any other spots anywhere that there was an existing building that may be underutilized uh, currently that someone may be looking that we could lease for a period of time till we figure out how we're going to pay for a new one? Uh, top of my head, I, I, I don't. Um, uh, I, I have thought of that. You know, the, the fire department used to be up on Chestnut Hill Road at uh, Frosty's, and uh, he he doesn't want to see anything like that uh, anymore. Um, that was a, a perspective that I thought of years ago. Um, How about right down by where the library is across, almost uh, just to the right of the library as you're coming into town? There's a, there's a building there on the right. It, I don't, it used to be an auto body place or something uh, Millwall motors they still got a uh i believe they still got a class two license um and peter would have more insight on that but i don't know what they do there anymore but um i believe they still hold a business license in town so if they hold a bill that i didn't really see any activity there i maybe yeah you're I, right i haven't either i, I, I haven't, haven't seen the activity there for a while, so I'm just wondering if maybe the gentleman or lady, whomever it may be, uh, would be interested in maybe giving us a yeah. spot that we could put some of your equipment in and, and leasing a that as a remedy for a short period of time or a period. Of time. I would say I would say um, it's it's definitely something to look into because in, in Bellingham we're actually renting a uh, building right now to keep some of our equipment. Our company had moved out and we needed extra space, so. We're doing the exact same thing right now in Bellingham. Yeah, definitely. Because in the, the short term here, we, we're going to have to do something sooner than later because of, you know, where our stuff is. It, yeah. Whether, like I said, it's a shed just to move that stuff down because the, these things are going to have to be scrapped. They're, they're an accident waiting to happen. Pete, yeah. the only, Peter, the only other thing I can think of is up at the Chestnut Hill Community Center. There was a business that was to the right of that as you stood there. I, yeah. Jeff, I think you're pretty familiar with it. Uh, that is a standing standing building. I don't know what it does or whether it's even active. I don't know, but um, that's another potential to either get someone to go in and take a look at and see whether it would service some of your needs, Brian. I've seen some activity yeah. up there driving by before, so I, I know they do something up there. Hmm. So, Brian, just so we're clear, you're your immediate need uh, is not necessarily to house vehicles, it's to get out of those trailers, which I call them Jerry Ellis Building 19 trailers. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty, My favorite store. They're pretty unbelievable. Um, <laughs> if I'm reading you correctly, Brian, and, and but separately, as the town looks at it, it's gonna have a new truck that you're hopefully gonna take delivery in the next six weeks or so, right? There's a hundred grand of the next two next two weeks. Even better. Then and then you're yeah. looking at the backhoe uh, mm -hmm. loader as well. And then I'm not clear, but it, I thought we were also talking about a street sweeper. So yeah. we're talking about that. So now we're talking three vehicles um, that are fairly new or you know have a substantial investment by the taxpayers in uh, that ultimately will need some housing. And and so you're talking a 
maybe a five year time frame. I think the building that you put in in last year's plan was the 900 or 800 grand in the five year plan that we had. Yeah, it was 850, I found it in the plan. So we had 850,000, so I can update that to 900,000. Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal. But we were talking about that being three or four years away. Yeah. So, but if we're, like you said, Peter, we're making investments in equipment of around $150,000. We do want that equipment to be protected. Right. So I do we need to house these things in Millville? When I I mean if we could find something nearby in Bendon or Blackstone or Uxbridge, is that possible? Or do we have to keep the equipment in Millville? I, I would think you would want to keep it close by. Mm -hmm. and then, I, we just don't have a building yeah, I mean, right you, now you, that you I can go to in Millville. In the middle of the night, I mean it, it's the way we we operate is is way behind the times. I mean, it's at the point now. I keep I, I keep barricades at my house, and I'm constantly getting yeah. pulled by the other half that I need to clean up my act. But it's you know I keep them here because I don't want to go up to those trailers at two o'clock in the morning or even six o'clock at night right now. Um, so so it, Brian, just, Brian, just if you think of the 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 Jerry Ellis. Uh, you know, uh, trailer replacement in a shed version, which I think I heard you say you would work great up at the uh, by the salt shed um, for the stuff. You know, that's your equipment, not your vehicles, but your equipment, and that you want handy so that yeah, you can get stuff out in the roadway to block a roadway, or guys with shovels, or I don't know what else you got there, signs and so forth. Would would that be a a fair understanding of sort of the priorities, not necessarily the short, need. Correct. So short term right now, we need to do that. Um, you do need to protect, start to protect our equipment. Uh, we all know that, you know, putting your, your keeping your vehicles indoors, um, especially during the winter months when we're, you know, utilizing them during a snow and ice event to come back and, and put them indoors to let them um get out of the elements uh, to come back in uh, when they call us and you know you know you got a vehicle ready to go that 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 is the ultimate goal to protect you know all of our investments that we're doing the mm -hmm. short term we need to at least replace what we have is what correct on what you're saying um because i know the building isn't going to happen um in the next year or two i'm asking you to start funding put you know an account uh or however you do it to to stop preparing for the building let's build it up and then when it comes time you know the taxpayers hopefully won't even feel feel the the cost of having to put the building up mm -hmm. um but i assume term, that the garage at the police station isn't available for any other use yeah. than what it's being used for? Uh, they keep their, they put their, their cars all going there during, you know, okay. well, all, 365 days a year, they have vehicles in there, but especially during inclement weather, mm -hmm. you know, they back them in, they, 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 you need a vehicle ready to go. Um, they do, and we do just as much. Um, we had a tractor trailer the other night turned sideways on Lincoln Street that hung up in a ditch. Who'd they call? You know, the police are out there. They call the highway department. And you know, we're working in these conditions that are just the, the deteriorating. Yeah. Arts so, Collision in Milford. What was that? Arts, arts uh, heavy duty towing. Oh. Arts Garage in uh, Milford. Yep. We use them a lot. They, they tow some of our big dump trucks and sanders mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, well, this wasn't a town truck. This was a, a tractor trailer who didn't know where he was going. But yeah, uh, they, they had it. They had it. It's it. his building. <laughs> but but so realistically, it seems to me two things that just to, that I'll say, you know, you leading the charge on all these things is really the, the best way, Brian, for this to happen, because none of us are subject matter experts, right? So for defining the priority of the needs is key from your perspective. Um, second, on the putting away or putting aside funding, that's what our stabilization accounts are for, but we don't necessarily earmark things for those. We do try to put 
money in. Um, so I don't know whether the capital committee, I'm, I, I guess we'd have to think about that, whether there's a, another way of funding and putting funds aside and raising it at a town meeting. And I'm- you know, yeah, I've, been, I mean, I've been around a very long time and whether things were done correctly or not the right way. And I'm talking, you know, going back 20 years plus here and through the future, um, the capital committees that we had and that were active and working, they used to be able to start a capital expenditure account. Uh, and particularly, I was more involved with the fire department back then. And, and they'd start, start a, a capital account and they'd say, we're taking, th this year we're taking $25,000 and they started another account under capital and they put it in towards a fire truck. The year mm -hmm. after they put another 25,000, the year after they put 100,000 and it, it came time to buy the fire truck they didn't need to do it. I mean, I, I think we're all taught that in our, our household budgets that we should, you know, be putting, you know, money aside. So when it comes time to buy something, you know, you, you don't have to finance it. You don't have to come up with all the money at once. Um, and, and that's what I'm asking to do. If mm -hmm. you want to know, I'm the, you're telling me I'm the expert. All right. I, I'm going to tell you, we need a building <laughs> and I'm going to ask for you to, put the building forth this year if that's all we can do if we're going to kick it to kick the ball down the street every year saying all right well next year well next year because we can't put money aside well then i'm going to say i'd like to see us go forward with the building yeah so i, I think agree. that is the ultimate goal uh here to to protect the equipment we have we have coming and the stuff we have going forward here in front of us um Yes, the, the town just added to our uh, sweeping budget because of you know the mandates on, under stormwater. They're recommending, uh, not recommending, they're mandating that you street, sweep your streets a second time during the year. Um, not only does that you know put an expense on street sweeping, it puts an expense on the waste end of it, and uh, they've got their fingers in all of it. Um, you start adding more of that equipment, you know, there's general maintenance and stuff the highway department needs to you know we can do on our own and um but just to protect that equipment is comes down to a building so i really think it's time to stop pushing that pushing that forward so brian what i need from you for the short-term solutions is you're asking for sheds because you're you're right i don't think we'll get a building this year i do need to um i think at the next meeting i don't know Peter, if you have tonight the balances of the stabilization account side so ask. Oh, do you? Perfect. Um, so right. I will have to yeah. go ahead. What are the balances? Well, we're gonna do that later. That's fine. I can tell. So in the in the general stabilization, there's 780 grand. In the uh, public safety, there's 215. And in the capital stabilization, there's 200,000. Okay. Plus plus change. Okay. So the and the reason why they put 200 in the capital was for these expenses in particular. Um, Brian, you are right that we could set up a separate fund for something. We would have to establish that town meeting and things like that. And I think for something as large as what you're requesting, we would need to do that, <coughs> right? I think yeah. that we would have to kind of start setting it aside and over a couple of years, um, make sure that we you know, kept funding that appropriately. Um, but like you said, I don't think we'll spend 850 or 900,000 on a building this year. Can you please get us an estimate for the sheds or something to kind of fix your short term problem for equipment? Like not for, we won't be housing trucks or anything like that, but for the other things that's in the building 19 trailers that Peter refers to. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because Brian, okay, if I could. Um, and speaking just as a committee member, no other role in life, okay? Forget that I'm whatever I do, including being a crazy husband to a woman that puts up with me. Um, for me to be functioning well on this committee, I always like to have a, a piece of paper in front of me that tells me what I'm supposed to be weighing in on. So that would be very helpful from Brian. I have notes of a $26,000, you know, uh, street sweeper, we have general discussion of things. So it's just to reinforce what Jennifer just said in terms of 
getting an estimate of uh, you know what this type of non you know of this shed might be would be very helpful. But having a piece of paper gives me something to write notes on, look at, think about, and then act upon with some level of comfort. So I'll just say that. So to be fair, are you talking about all my capital requests, or are you you're talking about the shed in general? Yeah, all of you. Like I, I don't, I don't know much about a street sweeper other than a street sweeper and a twenty-six thousand dollar number. Yeah. So you put that in. Um, can I share my screen, please, Alex? Oh, I can't share. You know, so in this... uh, in Belling, we we uh, ended up buying some Connex boxes about thirty feet long. We used for storage for some of the tools and stuff. And one of them was uh, only three thousand dollars, I think, and then the other one was about five thousand dollars. They're all used. You know, old Connex boxes, but it's it's a good storage space. If they're if the ones down there are that dangerous, then they would need to be addressed. It's a safety thing. Yeah. So, um, Peter Bryan didn't send us any new requests because everything he put in for he requested already. So this was kind of this is uh, the plan that we put forth and sent to I think the board of selectmen and the. Finance Committee. So these are all the highway department asks. So last year, front loader in the truck. This year, the street sweeper, I said 26,000, looks like it's 25. Then a mower, and then another truck in year four. And then you can see the $850,000 um, for the building. So, and I'll send this out to the uh, committee tonight after this meeting so everyone kind of has it. Um, so yeah, right. So, so I just be looking to the extent there is any additional information behind each of those mm -hmm. types of numbers that would be very helpful. I would find that helpful as a voting member of the committee. That's all. Okay. So yeah, so you're right, Peter, the shed's not here. So we kind of need that information if we're going to have the street. I didn't have a chance to go through and confirm the numbers because I wrote them down really fast, but Jerry had them readily available. From 16 through 20. Um, and it looks like, sorry, I just got to notice my internet connection is unstable. So I hope you can all still hear me. Um, <laughs> looking at the fall and talking the, really fast. I'm talking really fast. Stop making so much coffee. <laughs> it oh, blue, sorry. I, well, I normally do talk fast. So let me slow it down. A bit. We, we listen quick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but Jerry had listed off a bunch of numbers at one of our previous meetings for street sweeper expenses. And it looks like it's roughly between 12 and 17,000 a year. So basically the payback period for this would be two years for the street sweeper. So I do think it makes sense to make that investment because then that would put 12,000 back into the highway budget that would be available for something else, which I know that street repairs is, um, very close to Brian's heart. So between that mm -hmm. and then the other expenses that we've been able to offload with the front loader and the backhoe, that would give Brian a little bit more flexibility in his budget to make some repairs in town. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the sweeping um, end of it, they, they've earmarked 13.5. And then under removal on my end, they, they say 75, so obviously that's under my sweeping budget. Okay. Okay. Who actually removes the stuff? That you, you dump them into their trucks and they take it away? Uh, we use the town town property. We we take it uh, to a drop zone, um, consolidate it. Um, every couple of years, um, we have to get it tested, um, and then it gets removed from there. Um, we've piggybacked with Blackstone. We've used an uh, environmental company and they've taken it to a landfill. Um, so there's really two expenses the there, right? There's the expense of taking it from the truck and taking it and dumping it using one of now our trucks. And then there's a second so expense where it, someone comes and takes it from there and then takes it to wherever its final resting place is. Yeah, the expense for getting rid of it is. Uh, in, in the past is historically, and that's why we didn't change that number on removal, um, is we would pay for a front end loader, which we won't have to do anymore. Um, and then we pay to have it um, hauled out of town and brought to its end location. Um, when we're in town doing the sweeping, uh, 
the sweeper will then dump into uh, our, our town trucks and the town truck employees will bring it to the resting the re landing zone um, until it has to get hauled out. So really the only expense is, is hauling the material out of town and the expense of getting rid of it. And, and that's covered in the in the 7500 in this particular budget correct well that's the final resting place for 7500 so there's really not correct. an expense in there for taking it from the street sweeper and putting it in our truck and dumping it in our land and then picking it back up and putting it in a truck and getting it out of there correct um going forward here there won't be uh in the past as of last year we had to pay for a front end loader right to reload right, right. it um so no, we do it with town employees, town trucks. That was yep. Uh, yep. part of the, the savings. So that'll be an offset, Jen, I guess, is what I'm looking for. There'll be some sort of an offset by using that. that. So the 7,500, yeah. I'm trying to understand, is that the employees of the town? The answer, I guess, is no. 7,500 is the actual resting place where it ends up, which is an Correct. expense that's going to be there 13, all the time. 13.5 no of the sweeping, you'd have the offset you'd be able to use. So I have 13.5 for sweeping itself, 75 for getting removal. Was that was, was 21, 21 total of 21,000. Brian, just out of curiosity last year, did we do it once or twice? Um, and if, if the answer is something that we, we did it once, we did okay. it once um, because we didn't have our town meeting to allocate the rest of the funds. Um, that put everything. So you reflected you reflected the doubling of that in your budget going forward this year, correct? Correct. Because now, I from what I heard you say, it's now a requirement. Storm water twice. It's actually a requirement as right? we're speaking. Jeff's right. shaking his head. Yes. So I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah you're you're yeah. you're required to do it twice a year. You have to submit. Yeah, uh, you got to submit it to the state. Okay. Okay, and your and your Probably budget. Right. Your budget reflects same, so I'm, I'm good. Okay, so then, um, Brian, I think the asks from the committee for you moving forward are costs for shed for the short term to see if that's something we could possibly fund for this year. And as I told, I advised the uh, library for their funding. Um, we would need this by January 25th. It'll probably be after that. But if you could have everything to us by the 25th, that ensures we'll have it before our next meeting. And I will make sure that I alert you as to when our next meeting is so you can provide it to us before then. But by the 25th, we'll definitely get it if you send it to me. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Brian before we let him go? Looks like no. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. So Tina and Pam, I'm, I thought that everyone's list would be shorter than yours. And now I don't know if that's true. So I'm sorry <laughs> for holding you there for so long. Um, so there were four asks that I uh, had for you. And so I had 7,500 for the fence, 22,000 for paving, 10,000 for insulation and 20,000 for the roof. I seem to recall the fence may have been funded through another avenue. Am I remembering that correctly? Right. So the, the um, front section of the fence um, has been repaired. And um, uh, along with that, there were barriers placed in front of the, um, the fence. Um, so that was that was funded by the Kears Act. We were able to, with Peter's help, we were able to get that. Um, however, there still is the side fencing that needs to be replaced that also is rotting away. A good section of it has broken off. There's a big stump that's left because of that section. Um, and that to repair and replace that um, section is, is approximately $2,500. Okay. So for this committee, because it's a capital investment, we need the investment to be 10,000 or more for us to consider. So, yeah, so um, 
So we do have other repairs that I'm yep. wondering if if we can group them in with it, perhaps. Um, so yeah, let's have that. What were the other repairs? We can maybe have that conversation with the committee. So we've had the skirting replaced um, on the back of the building and, and the front of the building. However, both sides of the building still require the um, skirting to be replaced. Um, and right now we're estimating that that's going to be about um, $3,000. Um, we are putting out requests for bids for that. Um, so we're hoping to get something soon for that replacement. We've also gotten um, an estimate on the um, uh, pavement. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at that too, but we, we're we um, thinking that that might uh, come under the CARES Act as well because of the fact that it's a safety issue um, with with cracks in the driveway and stuff. So that one we might be putting on, we're looking to see about getting that with the CARES Act. Um, but then the again, we, pardon? And the paving, that's the $22,000 request you're hoping that um, comes from CARES Act? The paving was approximately um, three thousand oh, okay. dollars. That's to have it um, filled and sealed. Yeah, I think we're talking. So just just so you know, on the CARES Act. So we did use the CARES Act for some of the fencing already. Right. We haven't ruled out the side fencing, but they haven't jumped to say yes on that. Okay. Um, because you do have to justify it to a certain degree, you know, fair degree. And on the paving, we've already, you know, we had already gone through this, so I had approved, just couldn't get it done before right. the end of the year. But thankfully, we now have an extension to do it. So it will be covered under the CARES Act. It is allocated uh, uh, right now, at least in in mind and uh, game plan here. Uh, okay. And that was three or 4,000, I don't remember the actual estimate, but we saw something pretty precise about the work that was being done, which was filling cracks so nobody would trip and also providing a little bit of repair of areas, again, to keep people safe because their activities are going to substantially be outdoors uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's how we were able to apply some of the CARES Act funds towards these needs instead of uh, this committee. Right. Okay. Right. The other thing is um, we did have something about we were um, talking about getting um, the insulation mm -hmm. for the um, building upgraded. Um, the building is 14 years old. Um, originally, when it was built, the um, insulation was an R factor 30. Um, now I reached out to Lincoln Bar Barber and um, the R factor is now R48. So that's a big difference in the insulation. Um, so we were thinking that, um, you know, we could, that that is a um, good energy saving um, thing that we could do. Uh, so we're, we're putting out bids to get um, an estimate on the insulation as well. Okay, I did have that on the list as well for $10,000. Right, well, that's what, Right now we're waiting for estimates. So, um, okay. so hopefully I can get them soon for you. Mm -hmm. um, and the main thing would be the roof. Um, we are looking at, uh, um, right now I don't see any signs of wear on it, but the fact that the building is 14 years old, we just wanted to, make sure that the committee was aware of this, that this is going to be an upcoming repair that, that we are gonna have to have at some point in time. Okay. So, um, uh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. If I, if I may, this is Jeff Pett. Um, I, went, I actually went down to that senior center yesterday and I went down there after work and took a look at the roof. Um, it seems like the shingles aren't very old. They look like they're in good shape. Um, so they're, they're about 14 years old. Is there any other issues besides, um, you were saying that, about the drip edge on the on the ends and I mean, there's, there's nothing leaking or anything like that, right? It's just the, just the shingles and the drip edge on the side. But they, they didn't look like they were that bad at all. I, I walked up on the hill behind and I took, took a look at 
the whole roof looks like it's not bad. They, they have structural shingles on there and usually those last a good amount of time. Um, so it looked good to me, but I don't know if there's any other issues you're having with the roof besides that. Just age, you know, just that we wanted to keep keep it on the um, docket that it it is coming of age and um, that at, we just didn't want to have any any surprises for the committee when, you know, if it fails, you know, um, yeah. we just wanted to make sure that you're aware that it is getting old and um, we just wanted to no surprises that's what yep. we're looking for right no so. i appreciate that great pam i thought you were going to say something you look like you wanted I, to add yeah, something i wanted to say something um backing up <laughs> sorry about that going back to the um the skirting just so that everybody understands the skirting out of mm -hmm. the uh building we we this we the coa board had paid for having the total back of the building done and the front part and that was um i went out and measured for the measuring tape the whole building with tina so that i i would be prepared <laughs> just to let you know it cost us over five thousand dollars just to have the back and the front done the back and the yep. front um came up to uh The back and the front came up to 107 square feet that had to be skirted. The front of the front of the building has the walkways you go in, a lot of cement and everything, so that part didn't get done. So, and where the building is longer, you would think it would be more, but it isn't because of that entryway. Anyway, the whole the whole thing for the back and the front cost us over five thousand dollars, and it was 107 feet for the back and the front. Of, of skirting. And what that skirting is, is that they actually go in and have to remove the pre existing skirting, put in more skirting, yep. up to date code. It, the material they use is A Z E K material, and they slip that in the ground and they have to go six to eight inches down in the ground with it. This is the, this is with code, and that's what we went with and we paid for. Now, the, the two sides of the building have to be done, almost the whole two sides, except for a little tiny entryway that goes out on the side of the building. So that that come up to, um, let's see, that, um, that came up to 95 feet. So 107 versus 95 feet. It's a little bit less doing the two sides, but we need on the sides, at least one side, a vent going in because we have no vent right now. And that is crucial that yeah. we have a vent. It needs to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, we, we have problems with little animals running in there and they mm -hmm. can do damage over time. We did have somebody come out and go out and climb underneath the building to make sure there were no polar bears or anything like that living in there, and there was nothing. So that was a good thing, but there was potential with the damage to be done with these little animals running around. So we, we really, really need the, that skirting done on both sides. And that is, I would say, high priority. Um, and where it cost us over $5,000 to have 107 feet, 50, 95 feet, it's going to be another $5,000 easy because mm -hmm. this was done almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're talking, I, I would say a minimum of 5000 Okay. And then we had asked, Tina had asked Lincoln Bob for his opinion on that R factor. And that R factor was we now have 30 inches. Or not 30. 30 uh, Originally. Uh, yeah, R30, and now we need R48. So we're talking like 18 inches difference in insulation, 18 R factor difference in insulation. So therefore, with that, um, our building is, how big is our building? 3,100 square feet. 
3,100 yeah. 3, square feet is our building. So it's not small. It's, it's, a good, it's a good size. And the whole thing would have to be done. Um, yep. Now, when Lincoln Barber sent us over a little a little blurb, he said that that would be a great cost factor. In other words, if the if the if the we got up to code because we're like fourteen years behind, if we go up to code with with the R factor uh, on the whole upstairs, we're going to save money because we had to, we went through our heating, and um, you know we have gas heat at the senior center. And we still have to pay for it, whether they we're there or not. We have to run it because we don't want our pipes to freeze. So it is it is going to be a good, once it's done, it, it would be a good cost factor. And I just wanted to say that we had um, National Grid out to the senior center. And they came in as um, under the Mass Save program. We are looking, of course, always looking for freebies. And we're asking them, can they do this? Can they do that? But because it's a municipal building, we can. They will not do insulation upstairs for us for, for the R factor. They they will not touch it at all. But they'll do lighting, and they'll do um, they'll do uh, lighting for us that will initially uh, will pay for um, and save us a lot of money once once lighting gets done. Tina can explain more about the lighting to you because they only pay for, I think, like 75% of it. But that would be another huge savings as time goes on with electricity. And okay. um, we need uh, spotlights outside, meaning off the building that we'll have to pay for. And we're not talking big yeah. money. But we're going to have an electrician come in and find out how much it's going to cost for these spotlights. Because we only have a couple little ones up there. And our whole entire fence that we used to have no longer has any lighting. It has all the wiring, the old wiring. But it needs to be redone because it's old wiring. So the lighting is a big factor up there. Um, and Tina is going to is team just trying to get the mass save to pay for the light, the majority of the, of the lighting, but there will be a cost factor there that we're going to be responsible for. And it's a be, it would be a, a crime to, to not take it if it's free. Oh, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're if it's free. Every avenue. To do this. <laughs> and I just wanted to bring up one more little thing while I'm, while I'm going, we have a fire door exit. That, fire door is isn't any good i mean fire doors i don't know what they cost how probably a couple thousand or better but it's mandatory in a in the senior center municipal building as the egress for people going out in an emergency it's an emergency door it doesn't it, you can't it it's broken and then it's so old even the framework around it is going and we've been told many a times, you got to get rid of that door. Well, we can't replace it because we have to have a legal fire door. And that's going to that's gonna cost probably a couple thousand dollars or whatever. Um, but it's mandatory that it is a fire door. And where it is a senior center in a municipal building, um, we have to have the push bars on it, which we have now that don't work. And it's only because it's old. It's not like anybody tried breaking in. It's just the the, the, the door is old and we need to replace it. Uh, okay, I think I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Got to have it. Gotta Peter, have it. if I may, Pete, some of these things that uh, was mentioned here, um, potentially there could be an opportunity, the extension of the CARES Act, um, that we could potentially take a look at what I, I would think if we were able to get, you know, something like this uh, fire door that is a egress, uh, emergency egress. Matter of fact, it's lit up with an emergency light over it. Um, and if that door, basically, you can kick it with your foot and knock it in, um, that needs to be fixed. For yeah. Obvious reasons yeah. for a variety of them. Uh, maybe something that we could take a look at the CARES Act, I would think. What do you think? So the way I look at that, listening to just what Pam was describing and also what Tina's described, some of these items, you know, you have 
uh, a maintenance repair and maintenance budget for the senior center and not many much. of these are repair and maintenance items i know it's not much but i'm just <laughs> and i'm not suggesting it but i think we you know that's one of the things since many of these things don't fall under the unless you bundle them and i'm not sure even by bundling we get it above the capital uh level um as to what jerry's specifically asking I don't know. It, to the extent, you know, we try to be very ag aggressive. I don't know if that's the right word on how we've applied the CARES Act monies right. where there are gray areas. Right. I don't know whether that's a gray area that you described. So, but it is a it, this is the first I've heard of it. So it's a you know it's it's a pretty important thing. I think we got to take a look at that, find out what it, what's needed to get that fixed sooner than later, and find a way to do that whether it's CARES Act or otherwise. Um, so more to follow on that. I will say just in listening to all of this, that a couple of things. One, you talk about your, you know, your insulation and the estimates 10 grand, but you, you don't really know and Mass Save won't do it under their program, but it, it could fall under sort of the next round, one, two years out of our green, you know, Communities Act grant application, because it's that sort of thing bundled with the lighting that you're describing because we just got lighting for MES and we got lighting for the police station under the that the the current grant so it'd be you know maybe this would be something we put as a placeholder in our five year plan two to three years out and i think there's more to understand in terms of whether to get to the R48 factor whether it's just adding to what's already there or whether right. you're talking about removal and replacement i don't know um, and on the last thing, just since we've got you, is, you know, the 20000 for the uh, roof. Uh, yeah, I agree with Jeff that it looks pretty good from my layman's look at it. Um, but I think it's something to put on the out, the five-year out sort of placeholder so at least it's on the plan. And, you know, next year we might put it out five years again, but at least we keep it alive, you know, and not forget about it. Um, yeah. I think I think it would be ill-advised to not um, take any plan to it until such time as that we come and say, "Hey, we got leaks all over the place," and that's not the right way to put it forward. It doesn't make any sense. We've done that in this town. Brian, I think, described as kicking the can. Um, our shoes are worn out from kicking the can. We're trying to make sure, uh, I guess, from what they are telling me here that you are notified of the fact we've got a 14 year old roof. Mm -hmm. um, we want to notify you of it, want to let you know about it. Now, as far as the, um, as far as the uh, lights out front, Pete, there were lights on the poles out there originally. Yeah. Uh, those poles were yeah. removed and they put new poles in, which was very nice. However, the wires are there hanging there on the ground uh, bare wires hanging there. They are got they got the wire nuts, whatever you guys call them, on the ends of them. Are they alive? Well, they were alive when the pole was there. Um, that's a, that's the safety issue that needs to be looked at quickly. Um, the other thing is when people walk across the parking lot to the front of the building, and let's be frank with each other, any of the people that are doing it have uh, walkers and things like that. They're walking to the car in darkness. That that's asinine. When you look at safety, we put the we put the post up to keep the cars from going over, but we don't get the light for the people to go get to the car. That doesn't make any sense. So there's where we thought that perhaps because we were successful, or you were, Peter, being able to get the bars and the fence put in so people who potentially had slipped from the gas to the, I should say, from the brake to the gas, they could go over the edge, and that's a safety issue. Well, now we've got lights that you can't see when you go to your car at the end of the driveway. That's a, to me, that still sounds like a CARES Act safety issue. And I know we've got some funding that is still available on that because some was rejected, as you said, the last meeting. And if that's the case, then potentially the safety of those individuals with walkers or canes or whatever it is going into a dark area with no lights, but with the actual uh, wires hanging down off the poles that are there, makes no sense. I think it's something that the town uh, has a responsibility to the 643 seniors to do. Um, just to let you know, Ben, the, the actual budget um, for the uh, 
for the uh, heating on that. Now that's a um, gas propane. Um, the budget was $6,000 approved by the FinCom in 2021. Um, going from the R factor we talked about to a 48, uh, would save approximately 60% of the fuel of that, according to what the statistics tell us on that. Maybe not something, and I think I agree with Pete on this one, that it's something that we could possibly blow in more insulation at a later date. Uh, but it is because the senior center is not open that often right now, something that I think we can push down. I think it would make some sense to do so. But you are looking for an ROI in this thing, your eye on this thing with a $6,000 budget, because if you look at your expenses prior, they were 45, 48, 4,600. Um, you could save up to 60%, according to what the R factors are. Something that we could push downstream. And the last point I wanted to make was the, uh, let's see, all oh, the building uh, repairs and maintenance. Um, we had a 14 year old building here. This is the town property. It is an asset that the town invested in. We spent seven years getting the funding and the people and everybody together to put it together. Seven years, we finally got it done. And in 16, the actual budget and the actual spend on building maintenance repairs was zero. Um, now we did bring that up when we got to 17. When we got to 17, we actually raised it to $19. And then when we got, we saw the 19 balls and 18, we actually came in with zero. Um, that, that's out, outrageous. So you've got an asset, you've got a building. Brian talked about protecting assets. We're trying to protect the building. Um, to have a budget of zero or $19 actual spend um, doesn't make any sense. We're trying to tell you some things that we think we need. I hope to be able to reach across to Peter and say, Pete, let's try everything we can. If we can get lights or something here, help it out. We've not spent any money of the town, um, basically on maintenance, and we need to do some. And that maintenance is important to protect your asset. But that's all I think that the, the, the gals are trying to bring up. Cool. Yeah, no, so that's all true. But I think, as Peter mentioned, you know, for this group, it's a ten thousand dollar threshold, and I don't think yes, yes, I, I, I yeah. perfectly understand that, um, okay. and 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 it's well aware that the capital planning is is ten thousand dollars. Thank God um, that we've got that number. But um, I think there's some things here that needed to be brought up. Yeah, no, and I think that um, oh, Peter, sorry, you were going to say something, and then Jeff, I know you want to say something too, so we'll go Peter and then Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Just just to, the whole premise on the CARES Act was the COVID has forced the activities outdoors and we are trying to enhance the safety and ensure safety of the folks outdoors right. during those activities. So to the extent that the folks uh, at the senior center who are involved uh, are able to support other spending that makes sense for safety because of the activities happening outdoors due to COVID, uh, we can do our best to find a way. I great, think also, appreciate that, Pete. That'd be yeah, great. I think also, Jerry, on, on just even though we're a capital, you know, I also uh, pen the uh, budget guidance memo. So again, where I'm saying these things are, uh, you know, repair and maintenance types of things. In that memo, it says level fund things from year to year that are non-salary uh, or personnel cost related, um, except for the caveat to the extent there are critical needs uh, or requirements that can be justified. So again, putting a little burden on, you know, Pam and her and, and Tina and crowd to, to the extent you think you need some additional repairs and maintenance, and it sure sounds like you might, um, it, you know, we want to be smart about that, not penny wise and kick the can down the road, as Jerry said. No, I, I, I couldn't oh, agree with you more, well. Pete, and um, I appreciate that. Do, do you have that, um, that document on the guidance yet? Is it out yet? Yes. Could you send me a copy of it, please? I sure will. Yep. Thank you. Could and you I share also that with have the committee, actually, Peter. If you could share it with everybody, I think that would be helpful. I think it's important that we yeah. understand. I, I also have a copy of the um, the latest CARES Act and what it is that um, that they're looking for. And I'll be honest with you, Pete. Some of these things were stretching the banana a little bit. I agree with you. But you know what? Um, I think our seniors are worth it. Um, I think when you're talking safety, I think it's worth it. And um, I don't want to take any more time with the capital committee because I know it's $10,000. But I think there's some things here for safety reasons that, that need to be brought forward. A budget of zero, $19 and zero over three years. 
um, is a level funded at 3% or whatever it might be, level funded at zero or $19, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. Sure, Jeff, did you have some comments? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just um, make a quick comment. When I was down there yesterday, I was yeah. taking a look and you know, right at the, uh, at the ends of the fence, you know, it, it really slopes down substantially down the hill there. And you know, you can see where the wires are sticking up and out of the ground. And you know, when it comes to the whole safety and everything, I don't know if we want to perhaps look into. I know we're trying to, you know, budget everything out, and we had stuff a lot. But it, it may be something to think about to have some sort of a, a retention wall there. You know, and maybe even have it come up a little bit. I know I, I don't know what it would cost, but I think it would make it so. That, I mean, the, the the corners of the pavement are actually starting to slope down also. So. When it comes to, you know, like we were saying with Jerry, with the driving and parking and the light issue, it, it might be something to at least look into it, how much it would cost, you know, and um, if it's even plausible, you know, it would yep. make it look a lot nicer too, you know. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. The fencing that they talked about is just a, a split reel fence that was put in 13 years ago that had just fallen right. over. Um, and what yeah. it has, you have a, a, a big hole there where there's a stream right next to it. Exactly. And if someone yeah. takes that corner tight, they're going to go down in the stream. So that that's that was the rationale behind that. And trying to do it for safety for the for the folks, they, they deserve it. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think our retention wall would also make it so everything's a whole lot. I agree. You know, I agree. And it would, a little more protection it would be good. It would look a lot nicer too. It doesn't look you know that nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Just to just to be clear, Jeff, you're suggesting a retention wall in lieu of the fencing. Um, well, I would think you would put, put it right, you know, if you're in the parking lot just beyond the fencing, mm -hmm. you could build a retention wall behind it so all the existing fencing could stay there and those okay. little safety poles that are there. Okay. But just to bring the bring the ground up, because, you know, the more rain and, uh, you know, erosion and stuff, it's just going to get worse and worse. And the wires are sticking up and showing. And it, to make it more level would be a, a big benefit, I think, of the whole parking lot. You know? Okay. And, and last comment, Jen, I, I promise. The, no, 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 you can keep talking, Jerry. I just tease you about the that. Door, the okay, door, the door, really right? The door that we're talking about, um, fire door, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not just okay. the door, it's the frame is all rotted too. Yeah, so you've got to take the whole frame out. It's a metal yeah. frame, uh, yeah, it's all rotted, but it's 13, 14 years old, so you know, it needs to be replaced. Plus, it's an egress and it's, a, it's an exit, emergency exit, so that, that and a push bar needs, needs to be. Is the building is that on the right side? Sorry. sorry. Is the building is the door on the I got two people talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, you go first. It's on the right side of the building. It's the one that's it's the front, on the side Jeff. The, right side. the front right side. Yeah. Yeah. Front right. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's the emergency egress. Peter. I'm just yeah. wondering, has the building been inspected? Has Lincoln been in there and done his can't answer that? Can anybody answer that? No, he hasn't. Okay. No. Probably That's, a good idea, Pete, get him in there. Yeah. I did have Paul Ulack come down um, earlier this week, and he is writing me up an estimate of repair for that door. Oh, good. Um, Initially, he was looking at it, and that's when he found that um, uh, on the top of the door, uh, the frame, um, he showed me how it was really, It was. I was surprised how bad it is it's really pulling away from uh from the door so um so it's the door is worse than what i was originally what i originally yeah it's a door and frame the whole yeah. Line, yeah. yeah 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 and i'll be honest with you i don't know what the doors cost i i may not be a capital item but um if you could put it together with a couple of things with the the cares act maybe we can push it through that way and, and get safety is one of the key issues yeah, and I'm open to bundling a few things here as well. I mean, especially here, you know, we have the money and capitalization, uh, the capital stabilization. I just capitalization. I just put the words together. Capital stabilization. Um, so, and we have two hundred thousand dollars, and that's been earmarked for those investments. So, I'm certainly open to bundling things together. I just want to make sure that we're smart with it because I don't know that we'll get two hundred thousand dollars again this year. One thing with Millville is we have to be super smart with our money. Um, and that's, you know, one of the drivers of my involvement is I, I try to make sure that we be as smart as we can, but I am open to bundling things for, you know, like the library and the senior center, things like that. To make sure yeah. For safety safe. reasons. I agree with that. I think for it's safety and so that we can have these services for the town because we don't have a lot 
So I would like to be able to enable us to offer what we can. Um, Good point. I do have one more, Tina, I, I think. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry, that, that, that building has to be up to code, you know? I mean, it, yeah. if you have that, it, it has to, you know? So it's not something we can really- No, know, totally. With. Yep, but if I, to get up to code, if we add everything together and it's $8,000, then we need to, yeah, then we need to talk to somebody else. But if we add it, if we need to yeah, get yeah. it up to code and put everything together and it's- I'm sure Jeff, 10, Pete and I could find two grand somewhere. We're good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you were talking, I don't know that we got an, a, um, a dollar amount on lighting. And when you talk about parking lot lighting, I just want to make sure. So uh, right now, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tina. So right now I have National Grid giving me a, um, they, they came down, they did an assessment um, walk around of the building. So they're putting together a package deal for me. Um, so, but unfortunately I was hoping I could get it for this meeting, but I can't um so they, they're expecting that i should get it in like two weeks time i'm hoping it's a lot quicker than that so okay. i can give it to you for the 25th um okay what they were looking at was replacing um uh we have those tube lightings in the building um and what they're looking at is replacing them with LED flat panels instead. Um, they're, they're more economical. They're, it's a better thing. Um, it looks better. Um, and then they would they did a walk around on the outside of the building. So they were looking at some of the spotlights, perhaps replacing those with, with LEDs rather than what we have. Um, the unfortunate thing is we wanted to have a couple of like spotlights put in the back, um, but the this program doesn't allow for um, add-ons. They're just going to replace what we have. So, so um, like for those um, fence post things, um, they they weren't interested in in doing anything like that. So. Mm -hmm. um, but but I do plan on getting a I'm an electrician out there to give me an estimate on those. Okay, great. So then, and I just want to make sure because this was a, a little bit different than what you submitted, but that's completely fine. So I just want to make sure I captured everything accurately. So I have fence repairs at approximately twenty five hundred. I have skirting at I'm gonna I wrote down six thousand. It'll probably be less. Um, I have pavements, uh, filling and sealing cracks. Uh, 3,000, potentially a CARES Act item. I have insulation at approximately $10,000. I have a roof for $20,000, although not urgently needed. Right. And then I have a fire door exit, and you're looking for it to get an estimate of that. I wrote down 2,500. It could be 4,000. I think it'll be more than that. <laughs> okay. Only right. because I looked up that door on like... um. W. R. Granger site. Yeah. The door itself is is two thousand dollars. So okay. So now I have to have somebody install it. So right. Okay. But did everyone? Did I miss anything from that list, or is that everything that you the ladies were asking for for the senior center? I don't know. If Jerry, Ken, Steve, Chris, Jeff. Did I miss anything, Peter? Ken, well, I think got it all. I was, I was taking notes as you went. I think you, yeah. you ticked them all off. You got them. Okay. Okay. So then, um, so if I could just say, it would be helpful yeah. if Pam and, and Tina sort of summarize this, these items, delineate them with their best numbers later, and and possibly segregate those that are really safety items. Maybe they all are. Uh, I, you know, I don't know, but the safety items, because you know, as the little light dawns in the back of my brain, you know, we do have two really brand new businesses that are about to commence or will commence in the near future in the town. And they want to be good citizens. And so they're, they're, they're frankly looking for ways to add a little value for not a lot uh, to uh, get some goodwill in towards their businesses. Um, so this safety thing for the senior center might be a good way to shake the tree a little bit, if you will. Um, businesses. Always good to shake a couple of trees, Pete. I agree with that. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, if we could, um, so, and out of those, it sounded like the lesser priorities were perhaps the insulation and the roof, but it seemed like everything else would be requested for this year. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. 
Um, okay. So then I don't, I think maybe when we talk about um, what we want to put forth, what we want to vote on, things like that, then we can talk about what we want to bundle and what we could potentially get from CARES Act. So I don't think we need to make that decision right now, unless nope. someone feels very strongly about that. No, no, okay. we just felt that we felt it critical that we at least put the attention forward because right. up until this point, uh, I think the building uh, needs to have attention after 14 years. It's an investment we got to watch. No, for sure. Okay. Oh, Pam, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. We have a lot of people coming to the senior center to give us quotes, give us Great. estimates. We have we have um, uh, builders coming in. We have electrician coming in. You know, when do you need these estimates? So, um, we're second guessing giving you figures. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's okay. So, no, but, 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 we, but we did some research mm -hmm. to figure out, you know, what to give you a fair estimate. But we need to get this step in writing, which we plan doing. We've got a lot of, we've got a lot of people coming down. Team has been working around the clock trying to get all these people. Great. So, like, when do you need these estimates by? So the guidance I gave to the other um, people who attended tonight would be by January 25th. It'll probably be after that. Um, at the end of the meeting is when we usually set the date for the next meeting. So I'll send a note to both of you to the senior center email address and just okay. let you know. I said the 25th, actually our next meeting is, you know, whatever, February 8th or whenever it is. So I'll let you know. But, okay. the, but the guidance I will give you right now is by January 25th. But that might change. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for attending. Have a good night. You're welcome to stay, but if you want to leave, you can leave too. It's an exciting meeting. You're gonna miss a lot out a lot if you don't stay. <laughs> I think I'll I'll leave. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Um okay, so item number three, just because um the funding for the ambulance came through through Senator Fatman. Ooh, congratulations on that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. What a great job all the way around. Super yep. job. Yep. He did a really good awesome. job. Um, but he did say trying to spend that money after June 30th would make his make things very difficult for us. So I don't know, Peter, if there's anything we need to do, anything I can do to help you or any yeah. member of the committee or yeah. So, so what I, what I understand, first of all, he, till the, we have an agreement with the state, you know, it's not a hundred percent money in the bank. And until we have that agreement with the bank, uh, with the state, we can't go out to try to procure something. Okay. Of this nature, it does fall where you want to go out to bid, except for what I'm about to talk about. Based on what I understand from Senator Fatman, the timing of when we would likely get, a, you know, surety that we're getting the money and then lead to an agreement with the state, is likely to be more towards the end of March, is what I last heard. See, and we have to spend it by the end of June. So those are, those are the parameters that I understand. Basically, gives us three months to get an ambulance. And so what the chief has been doing has been talking to vendors, um, one of whom will ultimately is the current thinking going to be a sole source provider of a uh, demo ambulance that will suit our needs and be available to be purchased within that three month window. That's, so that's how I would answer the question of the current thinking right now. Now that said, based on that timing of spend by June 30th that we heard from Senator Fatman, um, you know, maybe because of the extension of the CARES Act, the time frame might change, but I still think yep. that, you know, the chief, uh, the approach that we're current, currently thinking will be uh, oh, great. Uh, the pricing of what he's seen so far in the demos falls within the, the 250 that we're anticipating. And, you know, 99% sure we're going to get, but it's not until we have that 1% nailed down that you can't go out and spend it. So, and you're on mute, Jen. Yes, I was. Thank you. Um, okay. So it sounds like we kind of just have to hurry up and wait yes. and then hurry up again 
Yes. So, so in the okay. meantime, we are we're also separately on the CARES Act. We were approved and given funds to purchase the the lift that they need, the new lift. So that will be coming probably before we have this ambulance. It'll go into the old ambulance and then we'll move it to the new and still do all of that within the, the funds that are available from these uh, outside sources. So that's where we're at. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Um, Stephen, I didn't see meeting minutes from December 9th and I just checked my email, but I will say. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, I, if you didn't send it, no, you might've sent it. Actually, Andrew yeah. and I were talking about this at our <laughs> session meeting. Like when I look at my selectman email yeah. on my phone versus on my laptop, it's not always the same. So, um, you know what, I'll email it's you possible. my I'll, another I'll, email. I'll bang it out a second time regardless. If you get it okay. twice, that's fine. Okay. All right. Thanks. And I'm going to give you another email address to CC when you send me the meeting minutes. Because right. I will get it out that one. So. Got it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and then for liaison updates. So I have Ken for MES water, but I think that's since the results. I'm going to stop that update. Ken, unless you have another update. I think that's no, Peter's my 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 backup and my <laughs> okay. Okay. Um the second was for BMR based on the school agreement, but I think we're pretty well set there. Also. No, that there's you know, they they insist there's no uh dollar impacts. Um I think maybe when they uh start putting their budget together for next year, we'll have to really, you know, be wide awake for that one and, and uh kind of Play a little offense on that and make sure it's uh, it's truly zero. Okay. Uh, right oh, right cool. now, there's really no, nothing going on, and there's you know nothing really until the budget season starts to hit. Yeah, except I'll just say um, that I took a bus ride with the the owner of the bus uh, line that we use, and with uh, Matt Aaronworth, and the chief was invited, but he couldn't make it, and Brian was invited, but Jonathan came instead. And the purpose of the bus ride was to look at the fact that the their plan is to put the K, all K through one, both towns at MES next year. And then the year after K one and two, both towns at MES. And so under that, the number of buses will increase from eight, I think is what they currently would do in a regular year. It will more than double the number of buses plus there'll be parents. So we took a bus ride to go over uh, discussions of uh, and I'm getting to the dollar part, but discussions of uh, one way street uh, d delineation, at least during certain times of the day, if not all the time, depending on what the cost might be involved to enforce the sort of the short term version or the you know part time uh, during the day. Uh, separately, the need uh, is for widening a two tenth stretch of uh, Thayer Street. Uh, if it's possible, and that, that's uh, that's going to be quite a challenge. We Brian's looking to find out what the rights of way are and so forth. But there will be a, a cost to that of tree removal, road, uh, you know, change and widening, and whatever else might be involved. Uh, the cost of that will be covered by the school. The amount is yet to be known. You know, pick a number. It could be eighty grand. It could be three hundred grand. I don't know. Nobody knows at this stage. So that. That's uh, Brian's going to look into that a little bit further, but th there is a real cost there that yes, MES will or uh, BMR will bear the cost or pay for it out of E and D, but it ultimately is out of monies that come out of taxpayer pockets. So um, there's that cost there, and and likewise on uh, MES, maybe we'll because we have the new deal, um, we'll have the political will since we're giving water to the kids from both towns, um, that will be a BMR cost, not a town cost. So that, that's what I'm going to push for as we sort of wind down or finalize our budgets for next year. Okay. Uh, Peter, did you say there was uh, going to be a doubling of the uh, number of buses? Yes, at least. Really? Well, we're only adding one additional grade. Why would it have to go up? By yeah, why would that be a doubling of buses? Yeah, I don't know whether they're going from different locations. I'm, you know, that's a fair question that we didn't get into. We just looked at based on what the bus line owner is saying and uh, 
what uh, the BMR leadership is saying, um, we're going to need additional capacity to handle buses. And because of the, they're going to be passing on the street there, uh, there's no room for two buses to pass. Or No, I got that part. I was just concerned about the doubling of the bus route. Which, yeah, so that's what they're saying. Yes, I'm confused as to why that would be. Eight to 15 or more is what they're That getting. makes sense, Steve? No, no, that, that really doesn't. And uh, it, really, that would only impact elementary. Um, you know, middle and high school would still be the same, and uh, the complex would still be the same. When you're talking one of the four buildings has an additional grade. I don't see how that doubles the buses. We'll, get, we'll sit down with Telstar and we can kick that around a bit because that seems yeah that seems way out of whack. Seems like a lot. That's that's the only reason I said it, Pete. Not to put you on the spot, but the only reason I said yeah. it was you said a doubling. My antennas went up and said doubling. Wow. Yeah. How so, can that but, be? But Peter, again, so that wouldn't be next September. It'd be the following September. You're saying, right? It'd be September of 22. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. I think they're looking to do it, uh, be able to do that next September. But I don't know how that fits under the time frames of how they present to the town their plan. So th that's a fair question right there. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had said He's the buses would double year. for K-1-2. He's doing K and 1 this coming year is what the, the okay. they Okay, and the buses would double for that? Yes, and and it will stay doubled for K-1 one and 2 in the second year. Yep. And to let you know also, the chapter 71, um, it, it appears, Peter, that um, the House has decided, and I think the Senate voted the same, that they're going to fix that at 80% reimbursement. As you know, that thing's been jogged all the way down to 52, and Steve, you know what I'm talking about, and jogged all the way up to sometimes yeah. 75. It's all over the place. Uh, we yeah. petitioned, uh, a number of us petitioned uh, schools that are, and, and they've got it. So they've asked for a fixed 80% to help us in budgeting so they don't have to all of a sudden try to come up with an extra hundred thousand dollars because the state backtracks. So that's going to be at an 80% reimbursement, which is going to be a, a big help. So it should give you extra money to, to absorb some of those uh, extra routes you're talking about. Yeah, that'd be great because it's real tough. The, the, the sequence doesn't line up right. The timeline is all out of whack. It's, you know, when, when you put your budget together, is before they tell you what the crossing we Yeah, exactly. So you exactly. just, you know, so close your eyes and, and point at a number on the board. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the 80% should that. give us a much better handle on that. I think it was 76% yeah. last year, Peter. So the reimbursement should be an, in, an in, increase of 4%, mm -hmm. which I think would be some $28,000 or something of that nature. Just to let you know that there is that available that could help the offset. Good yep. Again, those are all BMR costs, and uh, they're gonna. There's a joint meeting at the end of the month for the selectmen and finance committees of both towns and the town administrator. So we'll see what they have to uh, bring forward. Um, the next update is Old Town Hall repurposing. No update currently. No update. Okay. Um, I'm wondering once we kind of finish the articles and stuff, if we should have like kind of a working session, um, brainstorming oh. ideas, what to do with it and things like that, just because they, like, I think can, we, can, we need to ask you a question. Or, Jen, yeah. did you receive, uh, and I think I also sent it to Ken um, on both of your sites. I, I hope your site's working, Jen. Um, and, and in that, it was uh, an up, update on this from uh, Rich Cravello. Uh, who, as you probably know, lives next door to me, and we talk over the fence quite a bit. Um, I asked him to uh, regenerate uh, and to be able to put together, I believe there's some, uh, I think it's 32 pages um, that you can take a look at uh, that relives your history. Because I think last time we met, we talked, we wanted to be able to see what the budget was. I'm not the budget, excuse me, what the, the actual agreement was and, and what Kleinfelder came up with, is that correct? For those folks that were at that meeting, I think they were looking for that, Jen. Did you did you get that from Pete or Pete? Were you able to send it out? Or well, I sent that to Jennifer. I don't know if she uh, got that, but I sent a whole bunch of stuff. It was the Kleinfelder okay. electric. Yeah, the whole Kleinfelder report is yeah. about 138 pages. Yeah. It makes There's logical me. sense that you folks read that right. and oh, have I a got good it. understanding oh. of it. I think, oh. I think you've already got it, Chris, right? 
The old town hall evaluation with four attachments, Peter. Okay, yeah, Peter sent me that last week. And, so yes. Right, and Chris, you've got a copy of it, correct? I think so. Okay. I'll forward it to the team. Ah, I'll forward that. Yeah, it's it's very voluminous. Yeah. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, what I did was I asked Rich. I said, "There's a lot of questions that you and I and uh, Lincoln Bobber had, who was on that committee at the time, and we put together a number of questions. So instead of wasting time, because I think Pete said he was looking to have this thing done by uh, the time the town meeting came, um, I thought it would be prudent for you folks to read the report. And after you read the report, you can look at the questions that Mr. Cavello, myself, and Mr. Lincoln put together, uh, Lincoln Barber, put together, and there's answers in here. So I thought that that would be a help so that we wouldn't ask the same question over and over again, which we've been asking for years. So I, I hope that would be at least a help to you folks. And that's why I wanted to make sure you all had it. Um, yeah. It's, it's I don't know a bunch about building stuff, but I think if you read that, in some cases, uh, it, it may make you uh, have your hair curl a little bit. Maybe not your speed, but most other people, I think, if you read it, they will see that there's some things in there that are, that are critically wrong. You also see, um, and it's kind of interesting, uh, from Rich, which is uh, January 11th, which is what I sent to Jen and to Ken. Um, in there, he reminds us that his and our determination not to do anything, but maybe take that building out of there. Um, that he has some reservations on that now because he doesn't have enough information. Um, by that, I mean, he's looking for structural engineers to tear it apart and look at it and tell us what it is. I have no idea what structural engineers sounds expensive. We've, we've already been down uh, a similar road twice, not to the extent of ripping the walls and looking behind it, and checking everything out, but Feinfeld came as close as we could. And you'll see in Rich's notes there that that he said he squeezed a lot more out of them than what the $25,000 was that we ended up paying him for it, which we did. Uh, and that was, uh, just as a matter of fact, six years ago. Okay, so whatever you're looking at there, it advanced everything by six years, whether it be mechanicals or whatever it is. Um, and the building, he called it, it's an interesting expression, and you might like this one, he called it pickled. Was the building pickled? I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> People like Jeff uh, and probably Chris understand that that meant that it was, I guess, secured so everything wouldn't freeze. My understanding was it was not pickled. So add that to what you, what you see in your report and add six years to it. Then tell me what you think. And then we got to move on this. This is the elephant that something's got to happen. And Yeah, no, I agree. Later. That's why I wanted us to kind yeah. of start reading it. So I just forwarded those four documents to the team. Um, I'm sure they're uh, what someone on my team said, uh, last week said. So we're giving out free sleep aids. <laughs> yeah. So you have four free sleep aids. From... Yeah, I I, I gotta <laughs> I gotta tell you, there's a lot of information in there. That Chris, you know what the hell he's talking about. I I'm just I was a food salesman. I don't know what the hell. Yeah. He's <laughs> so I'm just trying to make logical sense out of does it make sense to spend the money. To get the building back up to today's standard. By the way, the whole elevator has to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. it doesn't work. And then put the whole thing back together again on the same spot where the water runs through it. Does that make sense? Now, Rich, I love him. He's saying, hey, I'm not convinced until a structural engineer says to me, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. So that's what his latest argument is, that he never did get that information from a structural engineer. We got it from Kleinfelder. Who did some cursory testing of things, but did not dig into the building, which is going to cost you a bundle of dough. So we got to think of it that way. But, but okay. if I could, Jerry, wouldn't that be fair to say that's about the structure, the safety of the structure, or the 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 viability of the structure? It doesn't doesn't reflect, and in the client, you know, in some of the things that you'll see in what was uh, sent, um, you, you know, there's a whole bunch of costs related to the systems, and bringing those up to code is prohibit, you know substantial whether it's wiring or plumbing or hvac yeah I, that is knob and tube is old-fashioned i think yeah yeah so i you know i'm having a harder and i was a holdout to see if there was a way to salvage it but i'm having a harder and harder time finding a way to see that it's of much use the other thing i'll point out is people read it before they fall asleep that some of the requirements that were used to say okay we need so many square feet for so many people in an apartment you could argue those those 
requirements are totally obsolete today. Correct. And has been proven so by the fact we're in a what 4,500 square foot building and it it seems to be suiting our needs. And I'll just uh, the last thing I'll say is on the February 1st Board of Selectmen's meeting there will be an executive session to update them about our you know relationship and the issues of the building we're in and uh, how how we may go forward in that regard. Okay. And I, I do want to say one thing, and, and, and Mr. Carvello uh, asked me to make sure that um, I told you folks, he is available and is willing to uh, help from his, um, you know, he's, he's the guy who knows all about this stuff. Um, he, he's willing to help out on this. Uh, we just thought a good place to start would be read the friggin' report. Yeah. Look at that. Look at what it says. Look at what Rich gives you history from when Columbus came over forward. And now you can <laughs> take a look and then you can say to yourself, wow. Is this is this worth it or is rich right should we really take a look at it's it's if we don't do that I and mean, then we got to make a decision let's come on let's move on yeah i agree okay so everyone has some reading to do for the next meeting um all right so that sounds good um next is storm drain and roadway repairs um, I don't really have a whole lot of updates uh, in that regard. I think uh, Brian has been on top of things and he's been yeah. grinding away at doing what needs to be done. So he's, I think he's, uh, we're pretty much all set there. Yeah, I agree. And the vehicle usage too. I mean, he's getting, I think we're. He's been, he's getting a bunch of stuff. That's why I, I, yeah. I, I um, I'm so adamant, but having a garage, a garage for, you know, work out of is, is going to end up being pretty important in the recent future, I think. If we're going to have all this equipment, we want to take care of it so we get the most for our money, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, Jeff, on your two updates for that, I'm going to put no longer needed, but I'll keep it on the agenda. So, if you want to, I won't call on you, but if you want to jump in and say, hey, I actually have an update on this, then you can give it, but I won't. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Exactly. So, I'm doing that. So, for Water, storm drain, road repairs, and vehicle usage we're kind of not talking about anymore um, unless something comes up. I'll, but like I said, I'll keep it on the agenda. Um, okay. Um, all right. So next on the agenda, items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to meeting. I don't have anyone have anything. No. Okay. Um, public forum. Alex, is anyone on who would like to speak with this amazing and wonderful committee? There's four people watching, but no comments. No comments? Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, next is the uh, meeting minutes, but I didn't, I probably have them somewhere, but like I said, I'll give Steve, I'll get you my other email and we'll take it okay. from there. What? So, Sorry, what, what, I'm sorry. What did you have? Oh, for the meeting, I'm, I'm pretty sure Steve sent me the meeting minutes, but like I said, I struggle with my email sometimes, oh, okay. Uh, okay. so I I don't have them. But I'm going to give Steve my personal email also. <laughs> okay, so Steve, that, that's Steve, good. He yeah, sends me the notes yeah. to make sure that, that, I that emails it. it's tough. Um, I I just got uh, an item I wanted to just throw out, from, sure. um, if I may. Um, you had talked the last time about the police cars. And it seemed to be a robust discussion. Uh, I'm not sure if indeed it actually um, ended in a drawer or <laughs> how it nope. ended, but there was a robust discussion. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, within that, there was information provided uh, concerning the um, cruises. And thank you for renumbering so we know which cruises we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. On that, um, the, the cars uh, all had, uh, you know, the information, the mileage, uh, well, how much gas they bought, miles per gallon, blah, 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 which is great. Um, there wasn't any uh, miles per gallon on the uh, 2014 Cruiser. I think they call it the administration car. Yeah. Uh, there's no miles on that one per gallon. So I have no idea. Um, I know it has um, a lot of miles, I guess, but don't know what it is, uh, 108,000 miles, but I don't know what that, there's no gas on that. I wasn't given that information, so I'll be happy to share the raw data. If you would, because I think it's it's interesting to compare that. And, and here's my point, um, and, and that just was missing, so that's why I'd ask if you. So get I it. didn't get it. You're, I can, I'll have to request it from the chief. Right. I didn't get that information. Right. Here, here's 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 what I'm. I don't know if if the answer is no to this, and so be it. 
um, if, if the Ford Fusion that we originally uh, purchased, we well, worked with the Green Energy when I was on that committee, and um, that's got 82,280 miles. You've purchased 1,907.56 gallons. It comes out to be 43.13 miles per gallon. Um, I looked at the car uh, number four or five, Ford Explorer, um, 83,366, pretty close to the 82,280 in the Ford Fusion. Uh, that's bought 7,037 gallons of gas, um, and that's getting 11.846 miles per gallon. So I said to myself, you know, the argument as I heard it the other night was, well, you know, gas is cheap now. So I just did some math, and Pete, you can understand where I'm, where I'm going with this. I looked at it for miles traveled, because that's really what it is. And if you're not, if you're sitting idle, you switch off to the uh, electric and you don't turn up your engine that way. But when you actually do the math on it, uh, you got a 60% savings using a Ford Fusion cruiser type car. I understand the guys didn't like it, and I thought that affected here or whatever. But the thing is, it's 43.13 miles per gallon if these, accurate, if these records are accurate. And you're looking at a Ford Explorer doing 11.86. So if you take the difference on that of, say, uh, 30 miles per gallon, um, and then you multiply the difference in the gallons, which was 1,907 on the Ford Fusion for the, about the same amount of mileage, and 7,000 gallons, <clears throat> excuse me, so about a 5,000 gallon saving, and you multiply that, what do you want to say for the next three years? 250? I, mm -hmm. I just thought gas just went up. So, I mean, is gas going to stay at this price? Who the hell knows? But the idea of it is that I use the number of 250 and you can save 10,000, 12,000, $15,000, depending on what you want to 260, 270, to whatever you think it's going to end up being. So I just, the question really comes down to, do we indeed, uh, is there an alternative available for a, um, a hybrid? And if there is, I think we fiduciarily should take a look at that and say, wait a minute, 43.13 miles per gallon is a hell of a lot better than 11.846. And therefore it may end up paying for itself um, by using 5,000 gallons of gas less at 253, 275, whatever you want to put a number in. Mm -hmm. If the answer is nobody makes them anymore, then thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I think we should look at them. So we, um, yeah, we just had discussion. We hadn't made decisions on anything yet. Cause I was going to save that for when we get all the assets together and then we could kind of have this. Debate yeah, but I, I think in this case, I wanted to make sure I was fair to the chief mm -hmm. um, because he had, he had a discussion on it and he, he said it was $4 a gallon. Now it's two. So everybody goes, oh yeah, it's a lot cheaper. Well, it's a lot cheaper. Well, we're talking about miles. We're not talking about the price of gas is that much of a difference. Of gallons, um, you know, it's a pretty significant amount. So yeah. I, I'm just throwing it out. If the chief says, hey, they don't make them anymore, then thank you very much for listening. Like I said. If they do, then I think we should at least look at it. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um... Because I, if you think about one o'clock, three o'clock in Millville, sitting down by the um, Georges, and, and it's, it's one o'clock to three o'clock in the morning, and the car's sitting, and it's just idling, um, it's burning up a lot of gas, not doing a whole hell of a lot. Um, yeah. whereas the, the idea when we bought and got the Ford Fusion Cruiser was because of the fact that it would save us on gas. Yeah. And I understand gas was 350 at that time. And now it's down to 250. Yeah. So I don't want to go too much further on this discussion just because I didn't have it on the agenda. Um, but, and, but I will make sure it is on the agenda for the next discussion, actually for the agenda for the next meeting. I was planning on putting. And I want to give. The... I want to give a fair amount of a warning to the chief, who may say to me, "Pull right. the horse feathers too," which is fine. I, I'm just <laughs> using the numbers you gave me on the report. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Fine. That's that's totally. I don't. It's totally fine. Um. So I'll put a, like all the departments that put in requests, and Peter, I will make sure the town hall is on there too, so we can discuss your request. But then I thought we would go as far as we can. Um. I don't. I don't think anyone wants to have a three or four hour meeting. But I thought we'd maybe see how we were at like the hour mark, 90 minutes to see if we want to do one or two more and then we'll cut the meeting and then the agenda for the next meeting will be to finish up what we did. Um, but I will put everything on the agenda so everything is open and available for discussion. Um, so with that being said, to schedule the next meeting, 
Um, as I mentioned, next week for me is rather crazy. So I'd prefer not to meet next week if possible. So I already have meetings Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm only, well, Laura Slackman right now is scheduled for the 19th. I have a work meeting on the 20th and then the 21st. I can only do Thursday, but I prefer not to do that. Um, okay. <laughs> so if we go the following week, um, 25, 26, 27, 28. Um, I know that based on some of the groups we heard from tonight, they might want a little bit more time. I don't mind pushing this off to the following week. I just do have a board of selectmen meeting on February 1st. So, but I'm happy to meet the week of the 25th and I'm happy to meet, meet the week of the 1st. Mm -hmm. So over It'll to the better. It'd probably be better if we gave all those departments like another week to absolutely get their numbers totally lined mm -hmm. up okay. rather than coming in half done, you know. Okay. So you want to do like the third or the fourth, the Wednesday or the Thursday? Perfect. Okay. Is anyone not available? Let's do, so today, three weeks from today is February 3rd. Can anyone not do February 3rd? Six so. 6.30? Yep. PM? Okay. So our next meeting will be February 3rd at 6 30. Um, and so I'll email the departments and ask them to get everything over to me. Um, I'll say like February 1st, just to give me some time to get in and forward it over to everybody um, to make sure we all have time to kind of review and look at it and things like that. I was not planning on inviting any of the departments unless we thought there would be some discussion. Um, and if we do invite them, then of course, we have to make sure that those are the things that we cover. So again, I don't think anyone of us wanna have a four hour meeting and then we'd wanna invite, you know, so for example, if we invited the chief to kind of weigh in on the points that Jerry just made, we would wanna make sure that we have, you know, talk about that first. Any thoughts to that, that we should invite the chief or anyone else, or do we think we can have the discussion on our own? Um, I think we're probably okay. It again depends on the quality of the information they give us. If it's complete and detailed, we're fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, Steve. If, if if people are saying, "Well, I think it's about," that, that's not going to cut it. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to run a business here, basically, and and mm. you need to know what your costs are. Okay. And you know what? If the people are responsible and care about the the building or whatever it is they're trying to protect, uh, their obligation should be to give you that information in advance. So if there is an additional question, they can follow up on it. But we just need to, we, we need to, come on. Let's, let's work. Okay. So then I, um, I'll maybe send, if anyone has any questions that people would like to send the chief and I can have him respond an email to us and then I can give him the option to attend. And if he attends, then we'll, we'll just make sure that we talk about the police stuff. Okay. Is it fair enough to say that the matter that I brought up, um, I wanted to do it well, the chief had the advance notice. I don't need to send you the question on that. I think you see what the question is. Um, does a does a uh, you know a hybrid make sense? Do they make them? Yes, no. If they do, does it make sense? Yes, no. What's the cost? Yes, no. And then you know, should we then take it up and say, geez, maybe we should go with hybrid? That's all. Yeah. Yep. Is, is the uh, is the second available for anybody? Because the third, I'm actually busy. If not, um, I, okay. I, yeah, I might be able to do a listen only, but I may not be able to talk. Okay, I can do the second or the fourth. I don't know what people prefer. Groundhog Day, fine. <laughs> oh, it's very second Groundhog Day? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that uh, works. It works. Hog okay. Day is the best. But what is the date we're, we're thinking about then? February 2nd, Tuesday. Second. It'll be 20 days from tonight versus three whole weeks. What, do you got a gig that night, Ken, or what? What's that? My you got a gig that night with your drums or what? Yeah, yeah I got to get them to work. <laughs> <laughs> he has a um, beard meeting. Yeah, I'm growing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know the place. Yeah. I thought it might have Jeff's been a cigar, go too, cigar so meeting. Jeff's but... not available, so yeah. <laughs> all right. I, okay. I don't know if you guys can hear me at all. I can't. My connection is getting real squirrely here i don't know what you guys were talking about did, did i hear february 2nd at 6 yeah. yes and we made fun of your beard also you missed that too <laughs> oh. at least they can grow one right Pete? 
<laughs> it doesn't sound mine. You know oh, it. oh, yours is gone, I see. Oh, okay. Get rid of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, me too. <laughs> okay, so before this gets any more rowdy, motion to adjourn. So Second. moved. Yes. Uh, Jen, could I talk to you when you're done? Um, sure. Okay. You want to call me? You want to stay on and I'll talk to you separately? Or? We can't talk. We can't stay on. Once they we end can't. Okay, then let's end that. If you call me, you got my number, correct? I think so. Great. Okay. See you then. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so, oh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Cheers. Bye.